Why hello friends, Jen Foxbot here. Welcome to another exciting edition of Math Myths. Ooh, so spooky. So this math myth comes from one of my uh, friends on Instagram and they asked, is it true that pi contains all possible combinations of numbers or s number strings? And does that mean that it, inc it could include other constants like E? So this is a really interesting question, and it was fascinating doing research on this. So first of all, what is pie? Not the delicious kind of pie that you eat during Thanksgiving or whatever holidays you celebrate, um, but pie is a ratio that describes um, the relationship between the circumference and area of a circle to the radius of that circle. So if I have a tiny little circle with the radius r, the circumference or the um, the distance of the the length of the outside of the circle equals two times pi times the radius of that circle, and the area um, equals pi, the constant, times the radius squared. Um, and this is true of all circles. And uh, mathematicians thousands of years ago have been able to find this number, which is a constant, meaning it never changes. So even as your circle grows and shrinks, this constant stays the same, which is pretty wild. Um, and it starts to hint at some of the things that I love about math and physics. Um, constants are a very bizarre concept in our world. Um, for example, the charge and mass of an electron, uh, which is a tiny little particle that is responsible for transmitting electricity. Um, the charge of an electron is also constant, as is the mass, and actually as is the mass of every fundamental particle that makes up all of the things um, that you and I and uh, my chalkboard and every living and non-living thing are made of, um, or at least all the stuff that we can see. Um, and so, you know, the mass of quarks are constant. They're, they're different. There are different quarks, but the mass of any given particular quark is constant throughout the universe, um, which is super cool. And like, why? Mm -hmm. It's one of the fascinating things about our universe and what drew one of the fundamental reasons why I was drawn to physics. Um, so anyway, I am getting very excited. So pi is one of those fascinating constants that shows up in a lot of different places, um, especially when we're dealing with geometry. So um, pi is what is called in mathematics an irrational number. And there are a couple of uh, key definitions for irrational numbers. The first definition is that an irrational number is infinite, meaning that the decimals go on forever, a very long time. And the second thing is that the decimals do not repeat in any meaningful way. Um, and so right off the bat, um, that basically nixes the second part of our myth, which was, can pi contain some other constant like E? And well, the answer is no. An irrational number can not contain any other irrational number because then it would not be an irrational number. So to think about it, uh, it kind of helps to write down uh, a little equation. So basically, if we were to say that pi contained the irrational number e, um, also a constant, Euler's number, um, then we could say that pi was the sum of e and some sort of finite subset. But then all of a sudden, our number becomes, our irrational number becomes represented by a finite sequence. And that means that pi would not be irrational, but it is definitely irrational, and so therefore this cannot be true. And that's actually true of every irrational number. Uh, no irrational number can contain any other irrational number. Could it contain some other irrational number? Let's say we were looking for the decimal 0 0.125. Well, right off the bat, we see that it doesn't contain this exact sequence of 0 0.125 because it's a different number. Could you find this particular string of digits in pi? Probably if you looked long enough, but is it guaranteed? Absolutely not. And so that actually is uh, the answer to the second part of the myth, which is can pi, does pi contain all possible combinations of strings? Well, to be honest, we can't possibly know because we 
literally don't have enough time to sit down and write out the infinite digits of pi. We are finite beings. Pi is not a finite number, so at a certain point something has to give. Even if you had generations on generations of people, you still are never going to reach the end. And so you still can never know for sure if pi contains all possible combinations of strings. But the, the real issue with that is not so much that we don't have time, but it's, it's more of an issue of humanity's desire to find information, whether or not that information is actually there. So you can also think about it like if you took a really big book, um, right now I'm, I'm reading a, a collection of H.P. Lovecraft's stories, and it's a pretty big book, it's like 500 pages. If I wanted to, I could be like, ooh, I'm going to find a secret code in this book, and I could flip through every 10th page and underline every first word, and maybe I would find some sort of message or some sort of sentence that when strung together it made some sort of weird sense. Um, but did Lovecraft put that in the book? Well, no. Lovecraft, Lovecraft couldn't have possibly known how that book was going to get put together. Um, and so rather than some sort of secret message, it's really just that I'm looking for information and I will find that information whether or not it is actually there because I can change the rules of my pattern. I can say, well, okay, every 10th page didn't work, but every eighth page, there we go. And if every eighth page doesn't work, maybe every second page or whatever, I can change the parameters of my investigation to basically find what I'm looking for, regardless of whether or not it is there intentionally or not. So that's kind of the issue with, does pi contain all possible combinations of strings? Well. One, we can't possibly know for certain, but the issue really is if it does contain every possible combination of strings, it has nothing to do with pi itself and everything to do with the fact that us humans are looking for that particular outcome. Um, and so, uh, let's see, there's another, there's another issue that I wanted to talk about. Um... So basically, pi is not required to contain anything of substance to us. Um, it just is a number. It's a it's an irrational number. Uh, is it a fascinating number? Heck yes, it is. It is a very bizarre number. Um, personally, I think any constant is bizarre. Like, why is it this specific value? And really, the only argument is just because, well, that's the way it is. We exist. And therefore, this constant has to be this value in order for us to exist. It's not a very satisfying argument, but it's kind of the best we got. Um, oh, yeah. So the other the other thing that I wanted to mention is that there's a meme going around, which I, I think is where this myth came from, that pi, uh, when you convert some of the digits of pi into, uh, into uh, letter strings, um, for example, the, the meme that I saw called out the ASCII encoding system, A-S-C-I-I, -I. Um, it was saying that you could find all of the information contained in the universe, it could contain your life story, it could contain Moby Dick, it could contain the great works of Shakespeare, when you just convert the digits of pi into ASCII. So that's a little, that's very misleading for a couple of reasons, and one is that, well, like I mentioned before, there's no requirement for pi to have any uh, reference to humanity whatsoever. Pi existed, the, this ratio existed before humans discovered it, and it will exist long after humans are gone. Um, it's just a fundamental uh, constant of the universe, which we happen to stumble upon using um, a system which we invented to describe some of the patterns in the world, um, which is called numbers. Huh? Um, and so the other thing is that uh, an ASCII encoding system is a really specific encoding system, and it's completely irrelevant from Pi. Um, so ASCII is one of the methods by which we translate the binary signals of electricity. So electricity is either on or off. And uh, we can use different encoding mechanisms to make it easier to translate human languages, like English, um, into uh, binary signals. And ASCII is one of those mechanisms. Uh, but ASCII is just a human invention to solve a problem. It has nothing to do with um, the geometry of circles or uh, the mathematics of irrational numbers. It's just a thing. 
And so again, that's really the issue of does pi actually contain information in that sense? Well, no, it's just that if you look long and hard enough and you find the right system of uh, translation, whether or not you use ASCII or maybe you make up your own uh, sort of encoding system, um, it's, it's simply that if you look long and hard enough for something, you will probably find it. Uh, but it is not inherent with pi. You could do the same thing with any irrational number. You could do the same thing with e, you could do the same thing with square root of 2. Um, and I want to be very careful here in that um, when we do those sorts of things, it can be fun and entertaining, and that's all fine and good. But we want to be very careful about putting any substantial meaning and weight behind those uh, findings or claims because it's not really inherent into the nature of the universe. Um, so personally, I say if you if you find that entertaining and it, it you know it brings you some joy, like by all means, whatever. But don't push it as you know this is my true theory and belief system. Uh, we have to be very careful about what we know is fact and truth, and what we want to believe. Beliefs are fine. We just have to be clear about them. So all of that is to say, uh, this is a really interesting myth, but it is false. Oh, uh, math myth busted. Pi does not necessarily contain all possible combinations of uh, mathematical sequences, and it certainly does not contain any other uh, irrational number. So there we go. Please let me know if you have any questions about pi, about irrational numbers, um, or about this math myth, and keep sending me your math myths. These are super fascinating. So yes, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time, friends. Bye!